I wanted to talk about sight and hearing because there are miracles in their, in their own way. But the big thing is that we must keep it working. Um, I know, and it's not really a joke, but my wife says that I have selective listening, that I do hear things, but I do not listen. Well, I'm sure that is a problem with many spouses all over the world. But that has very little to do with us. The hearing and the sight that I want to talk about is worth looking after. And you can see I'm a technical person completely. And I'm also the um, MD, that is not medical um, doctor, that, that is uh, like a CEO. But in South Africa, we're very careful because CEO these days stands for Chief Embezzlement Officer. But mind you, that could hold for other countries also. This webinar is very much to be informative and educational. I'm not trying to um, make big statements here. So if it comes across as that, then uh, forgive me. But I want to give you information. I want to give you an educational bit of a background on what this BEMA is about so that you can make a judicious evaluation of the facts that I present to you. Now, medically speaking, um, our medical uh, industry, our medical capabilities in Western countries is rather good at emergencies and catastrophes. Um, blockages of major blood vessels like you would get in the case of a stroke or a heart attack or kidney failure or even uh, gangrene limbs um, that lead to amputation or surgery, blindness, where many things can be done with laser surgery today. And it is amazing what can be done. And often the underlying cause of many of these things are blockages of major blood vessels. There are, however, also a lot of other ailments around. And the, the alleviation of those ailments are not always very easily treated. And it seems to me from the 13 years that I'm involved in BEMA now that many of these things seem to be due to impaired blood circulation. If you think of headaches and migraine, there could be many, many causes for it. They often work together. But if you go right, right down to the lowest level, then the cause, the original cause of it all has to do with lack of blood circulation. And in tinnitus even, which is an ear thing that we will talk about a bit later, things like blood pressure problems, circulatory disorders of all kinds, arthritis, rheumatism, there are so many things. And here we are not so good because um, our medical practice is we have an active ingredient in the form of a pill and we can take that and it might alleviate some of the symptoms. If you are very fortunate, it might even remove the cause of the problem. Um, but very often you pay a price for that. And the price is negative side effects that can be long term so that initially you don't even notice. Be that as it may, during this webinar, I will focus on vision and hearing. And I just want to share one or two things with you because it is miraculous. And then how the BEMA fits into this. That is my aim. Let's see how well I can achieve that with you. Let me start off with the brain. The brain is a pretty small organ in a way. It weighs about one to one and a half kilograms, which is only, it represents about two to three percent of body mass. And yet this brain uh, has to get about 20 percent of all the oxygen that gets into our body. And this brain consists of many trillions and trillions of neurons that are in a fascinating way interconnected. And this interconnectedness makes us uh, able to be creative, to think, to reason, to feel emotions and all those things. And this neuron network is in itself a miracle that it works. In fact, I was told by a biologist that the human brain is probably the most complex object on this planet. In terms of its design, the way it interacts at this very low level of the neurons. And here I've just on the left got a, a drawing of this uh, neuron with the cell body and then um, the, um, the dendrites. And then at the end, uh, we have a connection to 
other neurons. So we're not going to go into this because I'm not trying to teach you biology or anything. I just want to show you why the BEMA can be important even here. If you go to these contacts between the neurons, it is a fascinating aspect that there is actually a gap between the axon that ends on the one side and the receptor sites on the other. And there are ions, electrically charged particles, that jump the synaptic gap the whole time. And they do this extremely fast. And these ions that are there, as I sit here now, I'm not quite sure, I can't remember what it is exactly, um, but I think it has a lot to do with sodium and calcium and other ions, electrically charged particles. And it is just fascinating that our whole thinking, that whatever you see now and the processing of what you see now and what you hear now is all done across these little gaps in millions and millions and millions of these neurons. But brain uh, research has shown that these neurons sort of grow in clusters, almost like the galaxies in the, in the outer space sort of situation. These neuron clusters are specific for, let's say, hearing or vision or emotion or a particular memory. And it is into these neuron clusters that the research focuses to find out where the brain lights up when you hear certain, certain words or when you think about certain things. And you've seen those pictures, all of you, where they have a section through a brain and certain areas light up in red or blue or whatever it might be when the person um, has to listen to music or respond to a certain picture or whatever it is. Now, the interesting thing is that the location of hearing is in a very particular area in the brain. It is fixed there for all people, on the left and on the right, in the what they call the temporal lobe, as the brain is sort of, for descriptive purposes, I suppose, initially uh, split into four separate areas, the frontal lobe and the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe and then the temporal lobe. And I've just indicated here where the location of vision is, apparently, and the location of hearing. Now, if we get a bit closer to the ear, I want to just show you how the ear connects to the brain and why the BEMA is important, remember? You've all seen these sort of drawings, and the point that I want to, uh, the thing that I want to focus on is this cochlea, which is a a very small, uh, complicated organ in a snail sort of shape. And these three uh, little loops in which a liquid sits with little hairs in it that in three directions, like a, um, like a sensor in your iPad or your iPhone, can know exactly which orientation it has that is for balance. But I want to focus quickly on the cochlea because inside here we've got tiny little hairs you can see there in that little square on the left where it says one and two there are in a healthy cochlea little hair cells or cilia that get disturbed by sound pressure and depending on what you're hearing um, and what frequency it is and what intensity it is there is a certain stimulation of these little hairs and they send a, a signal to the brain. Now, these inner hairs have been photographed with electron microscopy. And you must imagine uh, these banks of little hairs, like in picture one, when they're healthy, they sort of wave like wheat in the wind uh, when the sound flows over them in this tiny little cochlear uh, uh, sort of spiral. And you can see the alignment of these things. And two, I've just got a picture there that focuses on, 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 on a particular little region. And then in three, you can see there's a little bit of disorder in there. That's already the beginning of some damage to these hairs. And then four is apparently a picture that I got off the internet of somebody that suffers from tinnitus. Now, the cause why they can go like this is twofold. The one could be excessive noise, and the other one is lack of blood circulation. Because 
when these little hairs or cilias, they are not really hairs, they just look like little hairs, um, but cilias, if they do not get a blood supply, they cannot function. But here's the miracle. In this cochlea, in that spiral, if you would flatten it out, it looks like the keyboard of a piano. And you would have the frequencies from about 200 hertz in the, in the center there until about 20,000 hertz uh, right on the extremity of this spiral. Now, depending on what note comes into your ear, the hairs will respond at that frequency. And that is amazing because it is a continuous spiral. And here too, depending on where the cilia sits that responds to a particular frequency, there a nerve uh, um, will be stimulated and a signal will be sent to that brain, to that um, temporal uh, part that we looked at earlier on. Now, you can see it here again on the left. And the fascinating thing is if you play a piano piece, you've got lots of frequencies playing at the same time, right? And then all the cilias at the right frequency will sort of vibrate in sympathy and that mixture of the signals will go onto this cochlear nerve and will go into your brain. Now, that, I hope, just tells you what a fantastic body you have, what a fantastic head you have, and that hearing is quite a complex process. Now let me quickly go to vision because they are very similar in a way when it comes to the brain. Vision is of course important because blindness is a terrible thing to, to suffer from, I think. Um, here is a section of the eye. At the back we have the retina and on the retina we have this construction that consists of what they call cones and rods and underneath you've got some what they call horizontal cells and then nerve fibers and that goes to the brain. And it works like this. The, the picture on the left is the two eyeballs as seen from the top of the, the head, a section through the brain of course, and that the wiring, if I can call it like that, goes to the back part of the brain and that is where vision is um, processed, the data is processed, and whatever you see happens there in the back of your head. And these pictures look a bit peculiar, but the amazing thing here is to, for all this to function properly, all these different optic nerves are even sorted out in three colors. And those three colors have got to go to a visual area of the thalamus where they are sorted, where they are, I would almost say digitized, although that's probably not correct. And then it goes back into your visual cortex at the back of the brain. Amazing stuff. And if you look at this in detail, I mean, you know, a Boeing 747 is nothing in comparison. This is really amazing. And more amazing is that it actually works. Look, it even works in three colors. So the, the famous Sony early televisions with their three colors um, were not the original. But, and this is really the point I want to make in all this fascination of hearing and and, and uh, vision is that in this brain, all the blood flow has to work. Otherwise, if you get a tiny little stroke in the area of your vision or your hearing, it'll impair your hearing. But outside of the brain, if there isn't enough microcirculation, small sort of um, capillary circulation in the ear or behind the eye, then we have a problem there as well. The eye is covered in small, small blood vessels. And here, for the sake of the drawing, uh, it is rather large, the, the, um, the, the micro vessels, but they would be even smaller and invisible to the naked eye because they go right down to about five thousand, no, not quite, seven thousandths of a millimeter. So that is really tiny. So this blood circulation, that I've mentioned a few times now in the context of this is extremely important. We all have heard, even if we don't know the details anymore, but we've all heard about the blood circulation and how it comes from the one 
chamber of the heart and it goes through a part of the body. Eventually it goes through the capillaries and then it goes back to the heart and so on as this picture on the left shows. And on the detail you can see that very, very small arterioles, those are sort of blood vessels that are slightly bigger than a fifth of a millimeter and above. And then you get all sorts of capillaries in between that, as I said, go right down to seven thousandths of a millimeter in diameter. And then on the other side, it all enters the venal system and the whole cycle repeats itself a couple of thousand times a day in a 24 hour period. And the heart is pumping many, many times in this, in this period. But the microcirculation, as I call this capillary network, is extremely important. It is actually the largest and functionally most important component of blood circulation in the human organism. 75% of all the blood vessels are smaller than a fifth of a millimeter. And you've got about 120,000 kilometers sitting in your body. And if they get clogged, if they get blocked, if there is something uh, not correct with them, we have a problem. So blood circulation, you might say, is not everything. However, without proper effective blood circulation, both in the larger blood vessels, the arteries and the veins, and in the microcirculation, the arterioles and the capillaries and so on, and the little venoles, the microcirculation, as we call it collectively, if that isn't functioning, there is no health. And there's also no healing possible. Because everything, the immune system, depends on a well-working blood circulation. No blood circulation, no immune system. One of the reasons I'm told by the medical guys uh, the researchers there in Germany who work on the BEMA, why elder, older people are so prone to infections and so on, and, and amongst other things also pneumonia and so on, is that the immune system doesn't work properly because the blood circulation is impaired. So a secondary thing that is happening in the older people is that because the blood circulation isn't working properly, the immune system isn't working properly, and if that isn't working properly, then of course you have less defenses. But the same um, mechanism that keeps us healthy is also the same mechanism that heals in our bodies. So microcirculation fulfills a vital transport requirement. It actually feeds oxygen and nutrients to all the organs and all the tissue. It disposes of metabolic byproducts and it supports the immune system. So it's extremely important, but there isn't even a subject called microcirculation. And in fact, the importance of microcirculation has only really begun to dawn uh, in the last decade or two. A restricted or defective microcirculation results in faster aging cells. The reason is they don't get enough oxygen and nutrients. And this, again, is the cause of a number of health complaints and illnesses. But it's a slow process because in 120,000 kilometers of small ducting and piping, where the blood is impaired here and there to flow through, it's a very slow and gradual process uh, of blockage that is almost unnoticeable. And it's a bit like aging. You don't see it from day to day, but you certainly see it from year to year or decade to decade. And so the restricted microcirculation is the cause of a number of health complaints and illnesses. And as I said, the microcirculation reduces with age, which is a natural process, um, but we often accelerate it by lifestyle. The consequences, a further weakening of the immune system, increased susceptibility to infections, health complaints. Uh, we, in the, in the worst case, suffer from chronic illnesses. Illnesses that just continue and continue. Now, the proper functioning of the circulation of our organism is an essential basis for vitality, for mental and physical performance, for just staying healthy and in a subjective way, 
of general feeling of well-being. And it's only under these circumstances that sufficient nutrients and oxygen come in and toxins and metabolic byproducts can be removed. If that works, then, um, then we are okay. But 75% of that sort of circulation takes place in the microcirculation, as I said. Now, blood circulation is something that we take for granted. Because although we have a body with an opening for food, we have a brain, we have a heart, we have lungs and so on, and we can all identify that and know that. But the blood supply, we don't really think too much about it, except if we hurt ourselves and we're bleeding. But blood circulation and blood supply is extremely important. And illness conditions equal problems at cellular level because not enough of the nutrients and oxygens can get there. And the reason is impaired microcirculation. And in the end, we sit with metabolic dysfunctions. In other words, the cells cannot do what they're meant to do. And an organism that consists of about 100 million, million cells is impaired in many ways if a large portion of their cells, especially critical cells, as found in the pancreas or the kidney, in fact, I would say every cell is, is crucial if they are not functioning. So blood circulation is about 15,000 liters a day and 1,200 go through the brain. Now, there are some pictures that were taken uh, by the Institute for Microcirculation which showed that in a person of a specific age, before you apply the BEMA, you just take a picture of the microcirculation at a level, we're looking at these uh, little black dots here, they represented about five thousandths of a millimeter diameter. So this is a pretty small picture. And after two minutes of BEMA already, we have a tremendous improvement. If these pictures don't tell you much, you should go on websites where there are YouTube uh, videos of these particular BEMA effects, and you'll be surprised. Especially in medical circles, if they see those pictures, uh, these little movie clips, then they say, wow, that is amazing. Because a medical person will immediately recognize the implication of such an improved microcirculation. Typically, here we can see a picture of a closed capillary. Um, you will see just now when it's open what the difference is. And the BEMA does that after two minutes already, and it does it in many places in the body. How does it do that? The mechanism is a complex one, but it, you could imagine it, it's a little bit like having an electromagnetic signal that sort of like pushes a swing, um, mechanically almost, to get it swinging again. And in that way, it's not a very good explanation maybe, um, we have capillaries that open up, but the BEMA does not force the body to open these capillaries. These capillaries are opened by the body's own self-regulating ability. Now, what does the BEMA actually do? Well, the first thing is it doesn't heal anything. Wow, you say, that is, that is a bit of a surprise. No, it doesn't heal anything. The body is doing the healing. If everything is working well in a body, ever since you were born, our body is trying to keep us in optimum shape. That includes being healthy. And it has a self-healing effect when things go wrong. But if it doesn't work very well, then we have to stimulate the microcirculation so that we can improve the essential supply of oxygen and nutrients. And as we said, the removal of toxins and metabolic byproducts from the cells. And that can only happen in the microcirculation. In fact, that can only happen at, at capillary level. Now, when that is working, the cells can actually produce sufficient energy in the form of ATP, which is a chemical, adenosine triphosphate. And when that energy is produced in the cell, then the biology inside the cell, protein building and so on, can work with a greater biological effectiveness. And if that is working in, let's say, ideally speaking, in all of your 100 million million cells, then you have a properly functioning regulation process where it doesn't matter if the brain 
or your pancreas or your intestines or your muscles are secreting something the way they have to do, then the regulation for your body temperature, your core temperature, your um, hormone release, your um, blood pressure, all these things are autonomously sorted out in a healthy body. Here's this energy production machine. It's a little machine like this. You won't believe this. This is a miracle that this energy production runs on oxygen and nutrients in a very complex biological process, but it is relatively known. I think they must have, um, they, they must have produced a couple of hundred PhDs on this alone. And oxygen and nutrients go in, and in a complex process, as I said, the energy is produced, and this ATP gets produced to the tune of about your body weight every single day. And why don't you notice that? Because as the energy is produced, it is immediately used up again. So this ATP is a compound that gets formed in these rotating engines, of which we have trillions and trillions of as well. And with this uh, ATP, certain chemical reactions are um, encouraged and the cells function properly. So microcirculation improves ATP production say energy, that means the cell biology is working well, and that implies the body can self-regulate itself. Now, does the Bema really work when I say it doesn't heal anything? Well, if it does these things that are physics-based, and it does that in a non-invasive way in the sense that the body just takes the the input, the stimulus to do what it has always done when it was optimizing itself, then that is what the Bema does. And some people say, but that's a placebo effect, isn't it? Not really. Placebo is always involved in everything that we do to get rid of an ailment or a situation. It doesn't matter if you go to a doctor or you take a sugar pill or you lie on the Bema. If you feel good about the Bema, that'll help. But what also happens is the physics behind the Bema, and you might believe in physics or understand physics or not, that doesn't matter. The Bema will do its work in your body every time, definitely. Is it real medicine? Oh, yes, it is. Do we have clinical trials? Very few, because the machine is only 10 years, well, 13 years old, and uh, a couple of uh, trials have been made. But if you think that there are 45,000 different diseases and we are not really treating any one of them to heal them, what we are doing is we are enabling the body to do its own self-regulation so that its own self-healing can kick in. Is it real medicine? I would say so. Because we have already got over a million treatments a day in all the world in about 40 countries. So it is used everywhere. It is registered with the Department of Health. It is registered in, uh, in, as, as an early stage in the FDA. It is registered as a class 2A medical device in South Africa, Europe, and a couple of other countries. Um, so, And we have the results. Under what circumstances, then, is the BEMA effective when we are talking about hearing and sight? Well, it can improve hearing. Did you hear that right? Yes, you heard that right. It can improve hearing. If you, of course, are a baby boomer and you spoiled your cilias in the cochlea in this 1968-69 Woodstock concerts at maximum decibels, then maybe you've done some permanent damage. Maybe there are other reasons why um, the hearing is impaired where these cilias are already broken then the Bema cannot fix it. However, the body has an amazing ability to, um, to sort of compensate for certain things. And we found that people who use the Bema for a long time have more acute hearing and they have certainly got improved eyesight. Is this a, a clinical trial basis? No, but we've spoken to many, many people who have used the Bema for more than five years and then we have independent corroboration that they go to um, an eye test 
maybe for a new driver's license or whatever, and they actually find that their vision has improved. Now, that doesn't usually happen when you're 50 and older, that your vision actually improves. So we've got improved hearing, we've got improved eyesight. Tinnitus is this constant noise in the, in the ear. Again, if these little hairs are irreversibly damaged, then they cannot be fixed. And the Bema is not fixing it anyway. The Bema is improving the blood supply to such places. And in the end, the hearing becomes better again. And then, it, of course, the Bema is very effective in maintaining whatever ability you have. Let me say you have nothing wrong with your hearing or your eyesight, but you're on the Bema every single day. But you do get older every single day. We all do. And in the end, if you've now been on the Bema for 10 years or 15 or 20 years, you should have deteriorated in many ways, in your eyesight, in your hearing, in your bone density, in I don't know what. And we have now seen, after these 13 years of Bema application, on really many, many, many hundreds of thousands of people, that we are maintaining our health at a better rate. Let me put it this way, because i got no quantifiable things for you. In the eyes, we were surprised that there are some very preliminary macular degeneration studies, which is usually seen as irreversible, just as tinnitus is seen as irreversible, and we've had some positive effects. Now, the numbers are still very small. Some people have tried it. They've put the intensive applicator of the Bema on their eyes, used it for half a year, a year, 18 months or longer, and their macular degeneration has improved. We've got a uh, eye surgeon in Germany who has done or has recommended using the Bema when people uh, suffer from bad macular degeneration, but they do not want to undertake the risk of a surgical intervention, then this doctor says, try the Bema. And in six out of seven cases, which is a very small number, I know, uh, statistically not significant, I understand that. But in six out of seven people, the result of Bema treatment was better than a surgical procedure at the best of uh, um, under the best conditions would have given. And then, of course, in eyesight, it's also a matter of maintenance, as I said earlier on. For which other conditions is the Bema effective? Well, here comes the big thing. And this is what makes this product so unbelievable. Virtually all ailments where an improved microcirculation is a key parameter will benefit from Bema treatment. Because that's all we're doing. We're improving the microcirculation. The rest is up to the body. The rest is also up to your personal lifestyle. But be the personal lifestyle, be it what it is, if you, if you include the Bema into this lifestyle, then you will have a better chance not to get certain ailments or get them later or to alleviate some of these ailments or get rid of them altogether. Another situation where the Bema is very, very effective is where a strengthened immune system really matters. Now, of course, a strong immune system matters every time, except when you've just had an organ transplant, then you don't want an, a, a strengthened immune system. That's why the Bema is not used on people who have just had an organ transplant. But a strengthened immune system matters because it makes you more resistant to bacterial, viral attack. It makes you more resistant to all sorts of things that can happen to you with infections in a hospital or outside in the big wide world. Or when you go to other countries and other cultures and you rub shoulders with people with other germs. And of course, as you get older, it is very important that you have a healthy immune system or a strong immune system because older people are very quickly susceptible to sometimes fatal pneumonia and so on and it's all has to do with the immune system i'm told by the medical colleagues now all cells depend on this effective supply of oxygen and the nutrients and removal of waste products so that blood flow that 
highway to good health must work. And when a cell doesn't generate enough ATP, it dysfunctions. And if more and more cells in the vicinity of that particular organ or tissue dysfunction, then we have a symptom. And the symptom um, can only be alleviated when these cells are either getting back to work, and they can only get back to work with improved microcirculation, or we give them some medicine, which may work very well, but it certainly will have a side effect. And the BEMA has no negative side effect whatsoever. So these things that we listed there, can the BEMA can only help the situation. It will never make it worse. It will definitely improve the blood flow. And for the reasons that I said already, the improved blood flow will give us more ATP, will give us better self-regulation and self-healing ability. You know what is really placebo proof if something like this is useful for animals? Now, on animals, we're using it also for 13 years already. The people who own horses, dog and cat owners, they are most impressed with the Bema. And we've saved many, many horses from definite death. The people who are listening and know horses and maybe have tried the Bema will corroborate such a statement. Again, was there any clinical trial? No, much too expensive. And we're not treating a specific disease, be it in a horse, a dog, or a human being. We're just saying, if you regularly go on the Bema, and by regularly I mean two or three times a week if you're okay, and if you have a particular ailment, you should use it at least once a day or twice a day, then um, it will work for you. And, and dogs and cats and horses cannot be placebos, all right? So, BEMA therapy for active and healthy people improves your mental and physical performance. You will have better well-being, vitality. You will have more joy of life. You will get older, of course, but you will stay younger in many ways, physically and mentally. And isn't that what we're all after? It is the most cost-effective means of preventing sickness by strengthening the immune system staying healthy and improving the body's self-regulation ability. I mean, it's a no-brainer in a way. If everything I've told you is true, and it is, then this shouldn't be too difficult to understand. But let's say you are ill and you're suffering from some ailment. Look at all the gadgetry we have today in a hospital. It's amazing what the guys can do to keep you alive. That's not necessarily good quality of life, but you're still alive. So. The BEMA therapy can support all self-regulating parameters that improve the self-healing, it improves the microcirculation and the oxygen supply, etc. And we observe accelerating healing effects, especially on visible things like wounds. Um, big wounds, especially on diabetic legs and so on. It's, it's amazing how well the BEMA contributes to uh, having accelerated healing there. And it improves the immune system, as I've said a few times, which is important for a person that is very ill. And there are no negative side effects. And here's the nice thing. It's compatible with every other medical therapy. Of course, many medical pr practitioners do not actually like that because when you treat them with a particular medicine, they want to know if that medicine is working well. And if you use the BEMA, then nobody knows, was it the medicine or was it the BEMA? Well, my argument is the medicine should have been proven elsewhere long ago um, to see if it is working or not. So if the medicine is working, that's fine. But if you have an improved microcirculation, your medicine will work even better, which actually means you can reduce the doses. And if you can reduce the doses, you will have less chance of negative side effects. So the logic is, is not very difficult to follow. Athletes are very keen on the BEMA as well because it increases their performance. It may be marginal, um, but you know, at the level of Olympic Games, etc., um, a fraction of a second counts. But also faster regeneration and healing, especially in contact sports like rugby, soccer, cricket, or whatever, where um, uh, injuries can happen. Um, you can save energy during warm-up because 
already your blood circulation has improved when you're just lying on the bema and you're still passive and you can save your energy for the actual competition. It prevents sport injuries in the sense that the body is much more resilient and uh, more resistant to injury. And of course there's a reduction of recovery time after injury so the guys can recover quicker. Speak to the rugby guys. The Sharks are using Bemers, they got seven Bemers, and they are doing extremely well. It's a rugby team for the American listeners, um, and it's a hard contact sport. I would say it's a lot tougher than American football because there is no padding. It's flesh on flesh. And the Bema treatment has been approved by the International Olympic Committee for a long time already. So let me, in summary, I'm coming to an end and I've spoken too long again. I just don't seem to be able to get this right to speak in 30 minutes. But every time you use the Bema, there is definitely an improvement in your body. Felt or not. Because it will always, because of laws of physics and hydraulics and biology, improve microcirculation. It will always improve the oxygen extraction in the body. It will, because of these two factors, improve the adenosine triphosphate, say, energy production at cellular level so that the cells can function better. And the result of all this is that the body can regulate its problems, like high blood pressure or low blood pressure. You know that you need two different, completely different medicines for high blood pressure and low blood pressures because the causes are the same because it is poor self-regulation, but the symptoms are different, so you get different pills. But the Bema says, you know, we're not going to treat high blood pressure or low blood pressure. We're going to treat the ability of the body to self-regulate itself because the body has about 20 different places in the body that have to control the blood pressure in, in a very integrated fashion. And all the Bema does is it gives the body the ability to do that again. That's all. And the results of all this physical and mental performance, vitality, quality of life and good health. Hey, what more do you want? But it does require a new way of thinking about our health. I'm not advocating that we're not going to the doctor anymore, that we don't use hospitals or anything like that. Not even that we don't use pharmaceuticals. There's more good done with all these things than bad things. However, if you come with a new technology, a new insight based on solid research, which says, hey guys, here is a method that for certain things the body can sort out itself, so let's try this then it would be foolish not to do it. But it needs a new mindset to try it out. So the Bema opens up a new way of life for everybody. And there is no clutter. There is no real issue. This is not a, a fad. This is not a fly-by-night product or anything like that. We're around for 13 years, as I said, in 40 countries already. Um, our aim is to have a Bema in every home. That sounds a little bit like Steve Jobs' dream of a computer in every home. And everybody laughed at him, especially IBM, the big guys, because they said, what do you need a computer at home for? Well, we all need a computer, a, a, a Beamer at home, because the world out there is very stressful. And in spite of what you might hear about Obamacare, healthcare, discovery in this country, or the medical establishment, in the end, it is you who is responsible for your health. Nobody else. Me, I am responsible for my health. I cannot say if in the end I have poor health, oh, it was the fault of this, that, or the other, um, especially other people in the medical establishment. That doesn't hold water. So here we go. You just lie on this mat. Join, join the, um, the Bema world in a way, you know? And it is easy. It is not difficult. Hey, have you got not got eight minutes a morning when you wake up and eight minutes in the evening when you go to bed and you have it integrated in your bed and you sleep on it and it does you no harm people it's as easy as lying down you just lie on it be it on a bed a recliner or just on the flat floor it doesn't matter for something that has no negative side effects can be used at home and everybody at home can use it including your dog and your cat 
It's easy to use. You don't need a PhD or a driver's license or a flying license. It works. It works in the manner that I explained. So BEMA, the physical vascular therapy, that's exactly what it is, is really something new, although it's 13 years old. It is effective. But, you know, I can talk here all night long. The thing is, if you really want to try it, you might waste a little bit of money if it doesn't work for you. That's possible, but unlikely. Or you just try it out and see that it actually does work. You can rent it too, and then you see the results for yourself. But give yourself a chance. If you've got an ailment, a chronic ailment for a couple of years already, don't use this machine two or three times and say, ah, it doesn't work. No, you've got to use it regularly. And in the case of rheumatism, arthritis, diabetes, you've got to use it as a daily routine every single day for quite a while. But let your doctor discover how you are improving. Don't stop your medication on your own. That's not a good idea.